Hey Trailblazers, welcome back to the Declarative Academy, your ultimate destination for mastering Salesforce through engaging tutorials and hands-on guides. If you're ready to take control of your Salesforce permissions and streamline your admin tasks, you're in the right place. Today, we're diving into the Create a Permission Set Group module on Trailhead. Let's get started and empower your permission management strategy. In this module, Create a Permission Set Group, you'll learn how to create a permission set group, assign users to a permission set group, analyze existing profiles and permissions to develop a model that includes permission set groups. Whether you're setting up permissions for a growing team or optimizing your current permission structure, this module is essential for enhancing your Salesforce admin capabilities. All right. Let's break down the key steps involved in creating a permission set group into three main sections. First, get the business requirements. Before you start creating a permission set group, it's crucial to understand the business needs. Let's consider a scenario. EJ Agarwal, the VP of sales, needs his team members to perform specific tasks as part of the sales order processing function. Some sales staff need permissions to make changes to orders, while others need permissions to modify both orders and contracts. To address these needs, you'll create a couple of permission sets based on these tasks, and then bundle them into a permission set group that aligns with the job functions EJ's users perform. This approach not only saves time, but also ensures consistency and scalability as your team grows. Next, create the necessary permission sets. Let's walk through creating two custom permission sets, one for sales orders and another for sales contracts. Create the sales orders permission set, navigate to setup, type permission sets in the quick find box and select permission sets. Click new. For label, enter sales orders. For license, keep it as none. Click save. Now, add specific permissions. In the Find Settings box, type Orders and select Activate Orders. Click Edit, scroll to the Sales section and enable Activate Orders. Save your changes. You'll notice that Read Orders and Edit Orders are automatically enabled because order activation depends on these permissions. Next, in the Find Settings box, type Orders again and select Orders. Click Edit and enable the Create and Delete object permissions. Save your changes. Create the sales contracts permission set. Return to the main permission sets page and click new. For label, enter sales contracts. For license, keep it as none. Click save. Now, add permissions related to contracts. In the find settings box, type contracts and select contracts. Click edit and enable the read, create, edit and delete object permissions. Save your changes. Yay! Now that you have your two permission sets, sales orders and sales contracts, you're ready to create a permission set group that combines these permissions. Next, create users who will be assigned to this permission set group. Remember, permission sets and permission set groups are only useful when they're assigned to users. Navigate to setup and open users. Create two users. Max Jackson, title, sales contracts, manager license, Salesforce profile, minimum access, Salesforce email, enter any valid email address. The username and nickname will populate automatically. Anu J Singh, title, sales coordinator, license, force.com, free profile, force.com, free user email, enter any valid email address. The username and nickname will populate automatically. Now, the main event, creating the permission set group. From setup, type permission set groups in the quick find box and select permission set groups. Click on new permission set group. For label, enter sales processing. Click save. Great. Your first permission set group sales processing is created. Now, let's add the permission sets we previously created to this group. Open the sales processing permission set group. 
Under the permission set section, click on permission sets in group. Click add permission set. Select both sales orders and sales contracts from the list. Click add, then done. Tada! Your sales processing permission set group now includes both the sales orders and sales contracts permission sets. Verify the group status. Ensure that the group status is updated. This indicates that all permissions are correctly configured. Scroll down to combine permissions and click object settings. Here, you'll see that the settings for both the contracts and orders objects reflect the access you defined in the permission sets. Next, assign users to the permission set group. Return to the sales processing permission set group. Click on manage assignments. Click Add Assignments. Select Max Jackson and click Next. Click Assign. A confirmation message will notify you that the permission set group has been assigned to one user. Click Done. Note, attempting to add Anuj Singh will result in an error because his license does not permit the permissions included in the group. Licensing requirements must be met when assigning users to permission set groups. Nifty stuff, but there's more to explore. Analyze your existing permission structure. Now that you've created a permission set group, it's time to analyze your existing permission sets and user assignments. Remember the principle of least privilege. Users should have only the permissions necessary to perform their jobs. Here's how to approach this. Review profiles. Profiles provide default settings for each user such as record types and IP ranges. Salesforce recommends using the minimum access Salesforce profile for assignments. Examine permission sets. Permission sets are collections of settings and permissions that extend user access beyond their profiles. They allow users to perform additional tasks like creating list views or activating contracts. Utilize permission set groups. Permission set groups bundle multiple permission sets together, aligning with users' job functions. This makes managing permissions more efficient and scalable. Tip. The permissions included in your permission sets should align with the tasks users perform in their roles. If a permission set needs to be tailored for a specific job function, consider how it can be reused across different permission set groups to maximize flexibility and minimize redundancy. Help, as you begin using permission set groups, transitioning to a permission set group model can be complex, but tools like the user access and permissions assistance app available on App Exchange can assist you. This app helps you view what permissions a user has, convert profiles to permission sets, summarize permissions across permission sets and groups, by leveraging these tools, you can migrate your existing permission structure to a more flexible and manageable model using permission set groups. Summing it up, look at that. You've successfully created your forced permission set group and learned how to assign users to it. By analyzing your existing permission structure, you've laid the groundwork for a more efficient and scalable permission management system. Now, Let's tackle the hands-on challenge. In this challenge, we are going to be granting the edit activated orders app permission in the sales app within the sales orders permission set. If you haven't been following along, you should follow the steps earlier as they are crucial to passing this module. Let's get started. First, head over to setup in your Trailhead Playground. In the quick find box, search permission sets and select it. Select the sales orders permission set. In the Find Settings box, search orders and select Activate Orders. Click Edit, scroll to the Sales section, and enable Edit Activated Orders. Save your changes. Now, let's head over to the trail and get you those points. And there you have it, another 500 points in the bag. You're really getting the hang of it. And that's a wrap, guys. If you found this video helpful, Give it a thumbs up and subscribe to the Declarative Academy for more Salesforce tutorials. Don't forget to hit the bell icon so you never miss an update. Also, 
check out the description below for links to the Trailhead modules and additional resources to further enhance your Salesforce skills. Keep trailblazing and I'll see you in the next video.